Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and for today's episode we are looking into Superman in Action Comics Action Comics number 689 uh, released late July 1993 so this is um, right smack dab in the middle of the whole uh, death of Superman reign of Superman um, arc you know after um, after uh, image comics per, per almost <laughs> not purposely I don't know, uh, after almost after image comics almost forced um, DC to uh, do some drastic changes to their um, publishing um, since um, you know Grim and Gritty was uh, just starting to kick off real uh, hard in comics so DC had to do a drastic measure to compete with um, Image and they uh, decided to kill off Superman and uh, break Batman's back turned Green Lantern evil, you know, and all of that. So uh, this is right in that era of comics, and uh, here we have uh, an issue that I got, uh, which is part of the whole Reign of Superman, which is when, as you see here in the cover, you know, uh, when Superman died, then we have four versions of him come back. We had uh, Steel, the Eradicator, we had Cyborg Superman, and uh, Superboy. And uh, on this issue, uh, you know, uh, you know, I um, will get into the issue in just a second, but um, I'm not really, uh, you know, that big a fan of Superman in comics. I mean, I like the character, but I mean, he's not my favorite or anything. Probably not even in my top five uh, or even top ten. I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, this is uh, aside from uh, the uh, Jim Lee run that he did in the 2000s after he did Hush. He did a 12 issue run on uh, Superman. Uh, so other than that, this is the only other time that I ever collected Superman comics like consistently because of the whole death of Superman and his return and all of that so I have uh, a lot of those comics in, uh, in the black bag because uh, you know I was just buying just to keep up with the story but um, uh, you know I'm not really I wasn't really that invested in the character as a whole you know I just wanted to see what was happening so um here we have this issue. Um, I think it's almost near the end um, of the whole storyline. Uh, this issue uh, titled, you know, Who Watches the Superman? Um, the, uh, the credits here, we have Roger Stern, Jackson Geis, and Dennis Rodier, 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 however you say his name. Uh, Stern is the uh, writer, Gaius is the artist, the penciler, and Rodier, I'm, I'm assuming the inker. We'll check the credits in the, in the inside. Um, but yeah, well, let's take a jump into the issue. Uh, if you hear my fan in the background, uh, it's because I uh, it's pretty hot here right now, and um, I need to close the windows in my room, otherwise the outside noise will come in, and... Um, it's just gonna be uh, distracting in the video so here we go and I'm also drinking some water so here we have this opening uh, splash page of a uh, reporter from GBS um, I think this is Betty Brandt Done. Not exactly sure. Wait, no, Betty Brandt is Marvel, right? Um, yeah, I think so. I don't know who this is. Anyway, 
they're reporting on uh, some uh, big fight that was happening in the previous issue on the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, and uh, this is a pretty cool uh, shot here. Um, the artist, um, uh, Jackson Geis, is a pretty accomplished artist. His style is more close to photorealistic than, uh, you know, the cartoony side. I mean, it does have its cartoony uh, elements to it, uh, you know, but uh, it's almost, I want to say, like um, a precursor to, like, the Brian Hitch style of realism that he brought to comics. Um, don't quote me on this, but I believe, you know, uh, Jackson guys, you know, does use, like, photo reference for his for his characters, uh, you know, just for the features, not necessarily to cast, like, again, like Brian Hitch, you know, obviously using uh, Samuel L. Jackson for uh, Nick Fury, and i um, pretty sure he used um, Brad Pitt as his Thor, you know, and all of that, so, uh, you know, again, uh, I'm not saying he uses photo reference in that style, uh, Jackson, guys, but I'm pretty sure he does use photo reference for, like, I mean, for instance, right on the first page, right, you can see how the features are, you know, pretty, the proportions and everything are pretty realistic, right? So this shot of the, uh, I'm assuming, you know, it's the Brooklyn Bridge in real life, but obviously this is like Gotham, well, not Gotham, but Metropolis and whatnot, so we call it something else. Uh, so this is pretty much a, uh, a pretty basic Establishing shot, uh, splash page, you know. Um, here we have a Superboy and a Supergirl. You know, I, I, I don't remember what happened in the previous issue, who they were fighting. Um, but, um, but as you can see, you know, a lot of... Uh, well, they lost half the bridge, so um, it was a pretty epic fight, I would guess. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot of, you know, for me as an artist, uh, drawing debris is one of the hardest things to fake because of its randomness that you have to, uh, you know, employ when drawing it. I mean, you would think that drawing, you know, a bunch of stuff in a background and whatnot would be easy but to make it purposefully random is hard because you don't want it to look like you act you purposely drew a, uh, you know a beam coming out or a specific rock or rocks you know piled up neatly one over the other you know it's the randomness of the um, of the rubble that's that sells you the image right so, doing stuff like this, you know, it is, it is, it's not as easy as it looks, stuff like this as well, you know. So, you got to look at, you know, some reference to uh, get an idea of just how, you know, random, uh, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at, uh, well, you know, I guess the best example is what happened in the Twin Towers on 9-11, so... Just the randomness of how all of the debris fell, uh, you know, is a good uh, example of, of looking at that. Also, the smoke is a pre, uh, you know, the uh, the way he drew it is almost similar to how I draw smoke, and almost like a uh, two or three bubbles, you know, uh, one, uh, uh, you know, next to each other. No, so this is a uh, uh, a good example of uh, you know you want to look at how to draw smoke. You know this is pretty much it. Same for the clouds. You know smoke and clouds you draw in the same way, but obviously you gotta use more uh, shadows and and whatnot with uh, smoke. But you can you can just leave that to the colorist, like he did here.
And then uh, here we have a, a shot of um, what looks like Superboy trying to save a, a car from falling down. And then uh, Supergirl trying to save Optimus Prime from falling down. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious, right? It's a red truck with a silver um, trailer. That's totally Optimus Prime. And then, um, so this shot is, you know, um, it's like a one point perspective, or at least, uh, you know, from the shot from behind, it almost looks like it's a one point perspective because your focus is in this direction. But then you have this element in the background, right? So it could be a three point perspective as well, because you got your point here and then your, your side, uh, you know, your ground level uh, lines over here. So this could be a three point perspective shot. And then you see here uh, a nice pretty face of a uh, uh, Supergirl here. There's a cool shot, uh, nice use of uh, silhouettes, you know. And then uh, all the cars here down in the, underneath the river. So yeah, uh, Jackson guys is, uh, like I said, a pretty accomplished artist. So uh, like I said, uh, not uh, more, not, not, not more, not most of the uh, the issues that I have in this, that I'm going to be showing in this series, like I mentioned earlier, doesn't mean that they suck or anything. This is a good example of a good issue. Uh, it's just that it's just, that it's just one of some of many comics that I bought in, uh, in the 90s that it falls under the uh, random part of it, you know. And like I uh, said, I uh, I keep the my the the what I consider my personal uh, issue, uh, personal uh, you know best issues in the long boxes and keep everything else in the in the bag. Uh, but no, I mean you can see here um, Jackson guys is is killing it, you know, with everything. Perfect uh, framing, uh, you know. Nice use of perspective shots here. No, it's, uh, he's um, and he's also you know um, his layouts, although they seem simple, although they seem simple, you know, and constrained within the uh, the boxes of what of the panels and you know uh, a simple grid like fashion. He does, you know, once in a while, break the panel to keep uh, keep it exciting, and then overlapping panels, you know, open panels, right? Everything to uh, to uh, to keep the uh, the reader uh, interested in the art, you know, and not just moving moving you across the page just to get uh, or not having the the story move you around the page, right? And uh, so then we then switch perspectives into like a um, a robot, you know, some sci-fi station here. Somebody looking on at what's going on in the news, and uh, and then it's finally revealed that uh, it's uh, well, what at the time you know people thought or you know didn't know was the true. Superman, Kal El. Um, people were wondering if this is uh, another, uh, you know, fake like the uh, the other four, but I think that you know it turns out that this was the the real deal. Pretty sure this is him. I don't think this is Eradicator. Uh, again, I'm not. It's been a while since I read this issue, so I'm not exactly sure what happens. It kind of looks like the Eradicator suit. But I know Superman came out with a black suit as well, so I'm trying to remember. But yeah, you know, all around pretty good art. This shot is pretty cool. So you can see that um, 
you can see how um, Jackson guys goes from between like real realistic looking faces to the more house style you know you could say of um, of DC comics at the time um, this is pretty much close to what uh, you know the um, the other artist that was on uh, Superman, you know, Dan Jurgens at the time. So, yeah, he's maybe trying to keep it, the look consistent throughout the time, uh, you know, both books, right? You see here, you know, this is the Eradicator. So it's throwing. That's what throw, it's throwing me off. I'm trying to remember. If this is Eradicator, and they're talking about him because of you know. Look at the faces. You know, so this is supposed to be him. Well, again, supposed you know, Eradicator is supposed to look like him. So and even I'm lost. Um. But yeah, I'm trying to remember who this reporter is. I don't think that, I don't know that they, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, here you can see how then he switches again to more of a, his, uh, you know, realistic style. Maybe it's partially due to the, uh, the inker, because again, the credits do say that it's, uh, you know, both, Jackson Geis and Dennis Rodier as the artist. Usually when they say that, they always imply one is the, the uh, penciler and the inker, right? So they call them as a, you know, a team. But sometimes, you know, they may, uh, they may uh, let's say, for instance, Jackson Geis maybe didn't finish a complete page and the inker then goes in and finishes it, right? So that's why certain, at times, uh, uh, certain art styles you may recognize an art style and you know an artist's art style and you see a switch uh, usually it's because you know uh, somebody else tried to finish their art for them uh, so going from this to something like this makes me think that maybe the inker did uh, more heavy lifting on this page So again, this is what, you know, this looks very much like photo, ref not photo reference, but you know, again, like more photo real and um, more realistic in the style that, that I explained, you know, like um, the Brian Hitch style. And you have your uh, Lex Luthor. I don't know exactly the story behind that version of Lex Luthor. I think he was supposed to be like a clone of the original Lex, and then I don't know what else happened. So, um, but yeah, you can see, um, you know, excellent. You know, there's a pretty, you know, I mean, you already know you're in Metropolis, right? You see the big L for the building, so you know it's the Lex Corp building. Uh, so it's a nice establishing shot. You don't have to go real big, um, right? You can focus on something else as the main focus of the page. So, for instance, you know, immediately, immediately from this, you go to this, and you know, oh, yeah, you know, that's it's Lex, the focus of the page, right? Then now this is a little more, uh, uh, more basic of your more con uh, basic um, establishing shot to tell you know oh we're switching scenes, you know this is a big open uh, farm uh, I'm sorry a big open space you know uh, farmland you see the farmhouse and it's obviously the uh, the Kent home right. And they're seeing in the news all of this about how Superman is gone and all of this and that and the other. So, um, this is a cool, uh, you know, I'm not um, trying to remember. 
point of view uh, shot you know this is more like you're you're in you're looking at what uh pa kent is looking at like from his point of view so this is a cool shot i try and implement that in my work um a lot and then here we see steel taking on some uh, street thugs and then the eradicator comes in i uh, probably i mean not that this is a a bad drawing or a bad shot i probably would have maybe focused made this panel a little smaller and made either this bigger or his introduction uh bigger right or maybe just equal size you know so yeah you know pretty big wide uh you know cinematic style uh panels you know the widescreen panels and now the two good guys get into a fight with each other right again this is another example of um how you try and draw debris right and trying to make it uh, random and not land out you know you don't want to um You don't want to uh, have it look like it's purposeful. And then here we have uh, Lois, presumably talking to Jimmy Olsen. And then apparently they hear the commotion outside, what's going on, and then, you know, they're right in the middle of the fight. Probably may have had this, I may have stretched this out a little more have him fly out maybe just across the whole page but again it's uh, there's nothing wrong wholly wrong with the art you know it's 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 um it's almost stay like i said earlier you know it's staying with the house style that is that was dc back then it's not uh too crazy it's not too um in your face like the typical image style that was taking over uh you know most comics at the time they had uh, dc had their way of doing things and that's pretty much how they stayed until basically i want to say till they uh bought out wildstorm you know because again you know Stylistically, you could say, you know, oh, well, this panel would have been more impactful if, you know, it was more in your face, you know, or this one, you know. So instead of being constrained to the um, the panel borders, he could have done something else, you know. But again, all the art is it's, it's good. I mean, there's nothing really you can look at it and say and complain anything about it. It's 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 nice comic book art. No. And you see here, finally, the uh, heroes coming into an understanding of some sorts, right? Because of Lois. Um, again, the great thing about uh, you know what I'm seeing here is the diversity of angles from uh, the artist. Right, nothing is nothing is repeated too often in the page as far as shots go um he knows how to move the camera around when they're going close when to pull out and all of that so again jackson guys is a, a very accomplished artist i don't know how many years uh by this time he was in um in comics but you can tell that you know you could call him a veteran at the time at, by this time and here and here we have this shot of um the spaceship in this asteroid field and i'm pretty sure this is uh mongo and then uh, let's 
let's see. Eradicator and the Steel are still fighting. They come down crashing. And it ends in a cliffhanger. Them leaving a, a huge crater in uh, the parking lot. I'm guessing this is a mall. So again, I don't know if this would have been my focus of the pa of the page, right? If you're gonna end up the page in a in a in a cliffhanger like this, I maybe would have made this bigger then, right? So you can see the uh, the impact of the of them crashing down. So yeah, that's um. Action Comics uh, 689, $1.50. And that was in the upper echelon of what comics were at back then. Um, so yeah, it, again, it's a, it's, a, 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 it's a good, solid uh, issue. Um, again, if um, I would do, I would do, I would <laughs> recommend uh, you know, if as uh, if you're an artist, to look more uh, from look more stuff, look up more stuff from uh, Jackson guys. I have a um, I may feature it later on uh, in the future. Um, I do have some issues of that he drew from a uh, um, a Predator series. Uh, uh, I never finished it, but I, I think I have the first few issues. So. Um, that might be something to, something fun to look at in the future. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's it for this one. Um, our first uh, DC uh, Comics issue in this series. And um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.